Hello there, Gemini. Welcome to your April 2018 tarot reading. So, um, my apologies for not being able to get to you guys for the past few months. I am sincerely sorry. Uh, life has really caught up with me, and I was slammed with a lot of things. Um, I'm hoping for things to be stable right now. So, um, for the rest of the year, I should be able to, you know, get your readings out on a consistent uh, basis, and especially, uh, definitely on time. Okay. Um, so, thanks for still joining me, and thanks for um, still following my channel. I really appreciate that. So, let's talk about this month, um, the month of April 2018. We do have a Mercury retrograde that is still in effect for the majority of the month, and that basically means um, Mercury retrograde, and especially because, you know, your planet, your ruling planet is Mercury. Uh, when it goes into retrograde, it's a really good time for us to reflect introspect and kind of think about our past actions, our past uh, behavior, our mental processes, the way that we do things. It's a good time to analyze all of these things and it's a really good time for us to figure out our motives, our intentions, rather than react to situations, rather than bringing things, um, like getting things started, it's a really good time to kind of contain yourself and kind of sit still with yourself, mull over your thoughts and really, 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 um, you know, like replay the, those memory reels in your head and to figure out what you're trying to achieve. I feel like the month of March has not been great for many of you. And I also feel like there are issues here in this spread that screams out to me um, power differentials, power dynamics. And I feel everything has a duality to it. The first thing that comes up here is fame and fortune. But the flip side of that is too much fame, too much recognition, being too much in the limelight can have its consequences where everything that you do is like scrutinized, where everything that you do is being judged, where you're going to have to be really careful about managing and maintaining the public persona so that you can, you know, um, um, so, so that you can basically portray the image that you want. So I feel like everything is very contrived and you're, you're, you're feeling like you don't really have control over your personal life anymore. So that whole concept about duality, you know, everything is a double-edged sword. You can have fame, you can have fortune, you can have, you know, an exorbitant amount of professional and financial success. But on the flip side, it gives you so much visibility where everyone knows you, everyone sees you, and everyone has their opinion about you. And, you know, you guys are actually very, very sensitive. Um, I feel like not a lot of people know that about you. But I always think of like people with that Gemini traits. You handle rejection very poorly. Okay. And I, that I also feel, especially with people that are um, that have the Gemini rising, you feel like you're adopted. You feel like you don't belong in that family. You feel different from other, from your siblings and from the people around you. And so, being rejected, being scrutinized, being um, exposed, being vulnerable. You, you don't like that feeling. And a lot of the times, too, for many of you, uh, your automatic, you know, defense mechanism is not so much defense. It's not so much like a, a cancer where they can retreat into the safety of their shells and just shut people out. Your defense mechanism is a little bit more offensive. So you're going to strike back like that Scorpio. You're going to strike back. You're going to give people a piece of, of your mind. You're going to, um, you know, rather than, than, than directing the energy or the attention to you, you're going to be like, well, oh yeah, but you did this last time. You did that. And so it's a little bit problematic here because 
trying to get the last word in and trying to argue with somebody who doesn't really care about truth, who doesn't really care about, you know, morality, who doesn't really care about getting to the bottom of the story or getting to the, the facts. It just, it's very circular. It doesn't really resolve anything. And then it exposes you more. Okay, so the smart thing to do is actually to retreat into your uh, sanctum like the cancers when they have you know the safety and the security of their home their clan their shell just draw back this energy not act and kind of contain yourself and sit still with yourself and yes it is very difficult to do that but you don't really have a choice okay so um, that is an energy happening since the March time frame. It is spilling over into April. And the thing about April, because we are dealing with this Mercury retrograde cycle in Aries, nonetheless, the, the most hot-headed sign in the Zodiac, it basically means that, you know, people are going to be very uncensored in the way that they talk. They're just going to shoot out BS at you. They're going to shoot out BS at each other. And no one is really interested in, you know, having substantial, like, um, having communication that is valuable or meaningful or communicates what it needs to be communicated. So that's the problem with this energy. And when it's in your rule, when it's affecting your ruling um, planet, it's not a good place to be. And so, you know, shut the world out. Sit still with yourself. Do things without the inputs and the influence of other people. And just try to be very, very self-contained. Gemini is a mutable sign. It's also the sign of duality because, you know, it's the twins. Um, and a lot of the times, too, it's really difficult for you to kind of sit still and not have that stimulation from your environment. You need to spark off with another person. You need to have another person to bounce ideas off of. You need another person to kind of like think like you in order for you to feel like you're on the right track. So you need a lot of stimulation from other people. You need a lot of feedback from a lot of people. And you need that constant back and forth intellectual rapport with other people and conversation with other people. And that is not really going to serve you well this month. I can't stress enough. You need to pull back your energy. Okay. And especially, um, well, I feel Gemini suns, but also Gemini moons and rising as well. Uh, the rising signs, if you're, you know, if you have a lot of like um, earth in you, then I don't see this being a problem. But I feel like if you have a, a mixture of Gemini and fire signs, you're going to feel really restless and antsy and uncomfortable when you're on your own. And I feel like that's where the problem starts, okay? So find ways to distract yourself. Um, they're saying as well, um, idle hands are the devil's playground. When you're bored, that's when you're going to start making mistakes. That's when you're going to be distracted and you're just like, caught up in the boredom of it where you're not going to be very mindful about the things that you do and so you know keep yourself entertained keep yourself focused keep yourself busy but more than anything shut out other people okay shut out other people um first of all what i'm seeing here there is going to be a tremendous amount of financial prosperity so um, finances looks really good and you know no news is always good news in the financial sector uh, what I feel here is they're saying things are getting wrapped up okay so that basically means um, publishing speaking engagements as well as um, decisions based on work contracts based on projects based on fulfillment based on you know uh, delivery it's like somebody solicit you for your services, you deliver, uh, you seal the deal, it's done, you get paid, they're uh, rendered a service, everybody's happy. And I feel like you might have, you know, mul they're saying multi-million, um, you might have really lucrative contracts that is finalized and you're in a really good space right now. 
you might have speaking engagement, book deals, whatever it is, those things are finalized. And uh, you're getting, you know, the, the back pay from that. So there are a lot of projects happening around you, and it seems really stable, it seems really good. There will be, as well, many, many... Um, so I'm, I'm seeing, like, celebrations, okay, where you're invited to different functions. And once again, visibility is going to be a big issue for this month where too much visibility can be a, a bad thing. So be selective about where you go and be selective about, you know, the, the types of crowd that you know is going to be there. So, for example, if um, a friend of a friend has, like, you know, this um, meetup situation and, um, and, and you know that there will be some people that you don't really uh, click with or jive with that's going to be there. You can decline or you can choose to shorten the amount of time that you're there, okay? So I feel like being a little bit more strategic about where you are putting your time so that it doesn't create a situation where, you know, too much visibility can create conflict, where you're being scrutinized or you're exposed to things and situations and people that aren't good for you, okay? Because I know deep down you guys are very, very sensitive towards uh, criticism. And so being around people that you pick up intuitively that they don't like you, um, it's not easy. It's not easy to grimace through that experience, and it's not easy to put on a brave face and pretend like it doesn't affect us. It's not easy. It's not easy for anybody. Um, and so you don't need to put yourself through that, okay? Um, so I, I do see lots of social functions, though, and, um, you know, it's going to have a, a positive outcome, but I feel like you have many to choose from. You don't have to say yes to them all, so be a little bit selective, okay? Um, what I'm also feeling as well is uh, they're saying interference in the home front. And interference in the home front basically means um, it could also mean like the physical structure of the house, there's something wrong with it, and you have to hire contractors, you have to have uh, plumbers, you have to have um, repair people come by and take a look, okay? So that's uh, one of the ways in which interference can happen. The other way is if you are living with children, in-laws are coming into the picture telling you do this, do that, uh, raise your my grandkid this way, raise them like that way. So it's like interference from in-laws, interference from family members, interference from as well, third parties um, outside the relationship. I do see, though, more than anything, it's like words being exchanged from in-laws, okay? And um, I'm also sensing as well, just like too many people with too many opinions and feeling like they need to, they need to give them, uh, to give you like a piece of their mind. Um, feeling like they, they're within their rights to chip in to tell you what you should do. Um, Gemini's, you guys have this very young and wanderlust and very curious energy. And a lot of the times, too, I feel like um, people underestimate your age. People underestimate your wisdom because you have this very young, vivacious energy. And then they feel the need to interject and to tell you, like to, to give you, you know, some life advice, right? And that, that can be really annoying. And so they're doing it from a space of, um, you know, they, they do care and that's why they do it. It can be very annoying though. And so if you can take that to heart, you know, don't let it get to you. That's going to be helpful, okay? Um, in the work situation, I have here the Two of Cups in the reverse. And the Two of Cups in the reverse, um, basically what this means is that you guys like your work environment, um, your coworkers and things like that. You guys like to have uh, lunch with each other. You guys like to have, you know, the, the friendship, that sense of camaraderie, that sense of we're all here for the, for the same things. We're all here for the right reasons. We're all here because we're similar. So you want to have those emotional connections, I, I feel like, with your coworkers. 
And for whatever reason, the people that you're around, they're very, very ambitious. Not that you're not ambitious, you're, you're definitely ambitious too, but you value the human connections. You value the conversation. And I feel like wherever you're working right now, everyone is kind of like looking out for themselves. Not that they're self-serving. It's just the environment is a lot more conducive towards their professional development, what they have to do so that they can get ahead. So everyone is like working, working, working. They've got their heads down. And you want to take a break from work, you want to have lunch, and everyone is like busy. So it just feels as if there's a dissonance between what you want versus the people around you, what they want, and the timing to um, to do things, to kind of like enjoy each other's company, to not work, work, work all the time. Uh, the, the timing is just not right for it. Okay. You're also feeling as well. Some of you are in a position where the demands of work, it's like, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't expect this to happen. I didn't anticipate it was going to be like this. So I feel like many of you are in a role where you're just kind of tired of the responsibilities. And you kind of say, look, you, you want to just, you kind of want to just say like, oh, stop, I don't want this anymore. This is not what I signed up for. That's what I'm hearing. And that's going to be something you need to work out. But I feel like, Mercury retrograde cycles in particular, and I mentioned this for Aquarius, for, um, for air signs. Not so much Libra, just you and Aquarius, because your energy is very similar. Um, the rest of the time when, you know, Mercury is direct, you and Aquarius, you have a lot of nervous energy. You're constantly on the move. You're constantly going. You're constantly finding ways to keep yourself entertained and distracted. And then when Mercury goes uh, retrograde, that's when you kind of have to sit still. That's when things around you get stalled, gets bogged down, and you're at a standstill. Physically, emotionally, and just, you know, mentally. And so Mercury retrograde periods are really good time for you to figure out, how do I feel? What exactly is going on? How do I think about this? How does this make me feel? And so it's, um, it's an uncomfortable process because, you know, it's forcing you to really dig deep and ask yourself, how do I feel about this? Am I still liking it? Is it still worthwhile? And I feel like some of you are heavily thinking about this in your career. Do I still like it? Is it still fun? Is it worth it? Is it always cracked up to me? And am I still, you know, able to do it? So you have some really deep questions here regarding your career that you kind of need to work through and assess. And keep in mind, because it's Mercury retrograde, it's good for us to reflect upon these things, but it's not good for us to act on it, okay? I feel like there are some people in your work environment that are uh, making life kind of difficult for you guys, and they're... They're kind of like Debbie Downers. They don't really want to have any fun. They can't really take a joke. And they can't really... They don't have that sense of camaraderie. And I feel like that's kind of bringing you down. And if these people were not in the picture, I feel like you'd be a lot happier. Okay? But I feel like either way, they're there for a reason. They're getting things done. So without them there, I feel like things can... Um, things can be very unproductive. So you also have to understand people have their purpose. They, they serve a purpose in this work situation and to, you know, appreciate uh, what they contribute. Okay, you don't have to like them. You don't have to be buddy-buddy with them. But you definitely need to acknowledge the fact that they are contributing something because I feel like they are. They're just not, you know, fun and bubbly and gregarious and outgoing and friendly. But they have their, their own things that they are contributing productively to the work environment. Um, relationships. I have here a fire sign. 
So this is a um, an Aries, a Leo, or a Sagittarius. And what I feel happening is, for those of you who are dealing with, you know, a fire sign, I feel like you might have children together. You might also um, share property together. You might also have, like, be in a relationship with each other where you're not really sure if you're still 100% in it. Uh, that fire sign seems very caring, very loving, very protective, but they seem a little bit like they're infringing upon your freedom and your independence, okay? Uh, I'm so also getting here a uh, water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. It shows up here as the um, Knight of Cups, and the Knight of Cups is somebody who is, if you're starting to date this person, I feel like it can... Um, be the start of something good because this is a really um, sweet, nice, and genuinely kind person. So that is Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. There is, in the long run, lack of compatibility. But lack of compatibility is not always, you know, the deal breaker. It's just how you deal with each other's energies, whether or not you're willing to kind of negotiate with each other. But you're dealing with someone who is actually very sensitive and they have a great sensitivity about them in the way that they communicate. And they're going to put you at ease because I, I mentioned before, you guys are really, really sensitive. And I feel almost like um, when you're hurt, you lash out. When you're hurt, you lash out. And then people don't understand how sensitive you are. And so this person is very sensitive and they're approaching you kind of like with kitty gloves. And I feel that you can be quite happy with this uh, water sign, okay? And so what I feel in your relationship sector here is that you're coming from a relationship where the other person might have been more abrasive to a relationship where the current partner is a lot more responsive and emotionally grounded so it's like the the energy is coming from a fire sign to a water sign and what that does is that it's forcing you to look at relationship in a different light it's forcing you to change your tactics your technique and change your communication style you don't have to be on the defense anymore or you don't have to be on the offense anymore you're actually with someone who it has a lot more sensitivity, okay? Um, they're saying here, a partner that is older and wiser. So you could be male or female. I feel like your partner is a very, very old soul. This is somebody who's really wise. I see an owl, and an owl uh, usually indicates to me someone who is not only, you know, like wise beyond their years, but they're very, very, uh, they're a very old soul. And they understand a lot of things without you having to spell things out for them. And I also feel like um, there's a lot of learning that's going to be happening here if you allow it. Okay? So the way to maintain more harmony in this relationship is definitely Gemini's. Don't interrupt when they're talking. Okay? You're going to be learning a lot from this person. And uh, don't deprive yourself of those opportunities to learn, okay? I also feel as well, um, having opportunities to travel together, to kind of uh, expand your worldview, and to try to... It seems to me like a process of incorporating everything that you know. You know, it's not just about trivia, gathering knowledge, but it's more about making connection between all the disparate pieces of knowledge so that you can form a genuine holistic understanding of the situation. So many of you are kind of like at the next stage of your soul's evolution where I guess the lower vibration of Gemini is about trivia, gathering knowledge so that you can, you know, answer disparate questions. But not knowing how everything is interrelated, how everything is connected, how everything exists in a web that is all about interconnectedness. 
So the next phase here and through the people that you're interacting with, even in the job that you're performing and uh, the, the, the new people that are coming into your social environment, you're learning to kind of like collect knowledge, but also trace out a line or a web to understand how everything is connected, how everything is related, because that's what true accumulation of knowledge is, to understand, to synthesize, to, to synthesize knowledge and to arrive at higher quality answers, okay? Um, I feel like this is the next step of the way. Don't fight it. This is something that you're going to need to do, okay? As the first air sign of the zodiac, and when we look at, you know, the first six signs, the first six signs are, are actually very young. Their souls are very young. And um, as the first air sign of the zodiac, it is really important for you to kind of look outside of yourself and to look at how other people are doing so that you can emulate what they're doing and then you can grow. And I feel like with, you know, Libras, it's the second air sign in the zodiac. Libras have a really, really sharp mind. They're able to retain information really well. And they're starting that journey where, you know, they're, they're very curious. They're like very scientific about the way in which they learn, the way they capture ideas, the way they compartmentalize and store information so that they can recall it when they need to. And then with Aquarius, it's like the higher vibration of that where they grasp concepts really really fast and then they can draw answers out of the blue and so with you guys as the first sign you're very good and you're naturally very curious and you're just really good at you know gathering as much information as you um you can and it's almost like a scramble for information but in the process of scrambling to know everything you're shortchanging yourself you're not really gathering the high quality answers you're just gathering knowledge for knowledge's sake without understanding how everything is related so the way in which you store information it needs to be changed a little bit so that things have a logical progression so that things are woven in a way that is a little bit more meaningful okay um, let me see if there is anything else um So, communication, you guys. Uh, I feel like I'm dwelling so much on, you know, that last part, mainly because I do fear here. Communication is going to be a little bit problematic, okay? So, once again, please, 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 don't strike out. Don't be on the offensive, okay? I know you guys are, you know, you would never admit that you're sensitive. You, you would never admit it. Uh, but I do feel it, and I feel it a lot more than other signs, like more than a, a Pisces or more than a Cancer. I feel like you guys are, are deeply sensitive, and then if somebody, being an air sign, if somebody uh, attacks your intelligence, oh, you take it personally. And so the thing here is, you know, don't fight fire with fire. And the thing here is, don't lash out, you know. Learn to sit still, learn to process things without, you know, needing the input from other people and learn to, you know, if, if it's not somebody that is uh, important to you, it doesn't matter what they say, okay? That's just the reality of it. If we're constantly worried about how other people perceive us and how, you know, to please other people, we're just never going to evolve as an individual, okay? So I'm going to leave you guys with that. I hope that the month is uh, going to be it's going to be smooth for you guys. And I feel like it can be. It's just the communication here. We need to arrive at higher quality answers, okay? Um, I wish you all the best, Geminis. Take care of yourself, all right? And I'll talk to you guys soon. Um, I'll try to be back for the mid-month reading, but I'm not sure if I have time. If not, I'll see you guys in May. But either way, take care of yourself, okay? Um, talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.